Hey guys, Alex from Seventh Hour Films back again with Vinland Saga. Last time around, we had Courage, where basically uh, Omar had to make the decision on surrendering to Canute or not, uh, which was puzzling to his mother and to Thorgil because uh, they should make the decision and they want to. Well, the mother doesn't want to fight, but she didn't want to surrender and be banished from the country. And Thorgil just wants to take a couple guys and try to kill the king and. See what that accomplishes. Um, but it was Omar's decision as the successor to Ketil with the farm. And he chose to surrender because he's just had enough. So he's heading over to Canute with Snake to let him know of his decision. Meanwhile, ahead of time, uh, Thorfinn has gone over to try and negotiate with Canute. And uh, Canute has decided not to see Thorfinn. But uh, Thorfinn has decided to uh, get past all the uh, the warriors there, that he will take 100 punches. And if he can withstand 100 punches, then he will win the bet and he will be allowed to see the king. So, this is going well. Yeah, it, It's something I thought of later, but I put it in the description of last episode where I said, like... This isn't, right, like, we're not, like, this isn't actually happening. Thorfinn isn't doing something, taking something that his friend literally just died of, you know? Now, obviously, Thorfinn is built differently from Arnaid, from Einar, even, even though Einar is pretty tough now with all the, all the tree pushing he's done. But even still, it's like, Thorfinn is built differently than most people. But Arnade literally just died of this, dude. I don't know, but he knows what he's doing. He's taken some pretty powerful hits before, but 100 in a row? Uh, from, what was the guy's name? Drop the Bear Killer or something like that? So, I don't know. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Um, like always, the reaction is down in the description and the pinned comment for your viewing pleasure. So let's go ahead and jump right into this episode of Vinland Saga. Here we go. Now I get it. Now I get it. He's not the demon who kills the demons, but the demon who saves the demons. King of Hell. The Fallen Angels. God, uh, my head is kind of swimming. Like, I don't even know where to start. I, I mean, it's... It, I mean, you know, here, here's where we can start. Show's amazing. Okay, next. Um... It, it really is, like, it, it really is almost a role reversal, you know? As, as we've seen this season, we've seen Thorfinn grow. We've seen Canute regress, not to what he was originally, but regress as a human being, you know? I mean, it's a strange thing because it's, okay, here's my, here's the, I guess, the philosophical questions for today um and this is going to sound really weird especially out of context but are all people created equal maybe not even created just are all people equal let's not even say created because you know what created yes actually all people are created equally. But do we all stay equal? That's actually the bigger question, I think. You know? Because the question of, you know, well, are all men created equal? That's an, that's an easy way of just dipping into racism. You know? And that's stupid. That's, inc that's incredibly stupid. You know? That's incredibly stupid that it's like, oh, well, you, you look different from me in this, in this one specific way, and that's why I hate you and all the people that look like you, and it's like, that's stupid. That's incredibly stupid. So let's, so it's not that, it's not a, are all men created equal, it's, do all men stay equal? I think that's actually the bigger question here. 
are do all people stay equal? Because it's a it's a good point that's like you know because we've kind of been dividing in this show between the Vikings, the Warriors, and the Misfits, basically. You know, we've had this conversation a couple episodes back of, you know, the you know, the misfits. Can we take all the misfits, you know? The people that don't fit into the I guess societal norm, you know, in here, and it's such an interesting way of commenting on this, because it's exactly the stuff that's happening today. A thousand years after this takes place, these are still conversations we have today, you know? But for this time period, 1,000 years ago, the social norm is of a Norse man, you know? Like, we, we saw last episode, uh, Omar's mother being like, oh, you want to surrender? Doesn't that embarrass you as a Norse man? And him saying, yes, it does. But I can't do this, you know? Like, he's basically saying, like, I'd rather be an embarrassment than actually be a Norse man, you know? And they, you know... And they've said that about, you know, that's that was the conversation that Thorfinn and Einar had in the shack, you know? So that's, that's the thing. But it's like, but the people who do conform to that social norm, even if it's bad, I, I guess it's a question of are they worth, are they worth it, you know? And that's an interesting, it, it's an interesting thing this this what honestly now is a new debate that i was not expecting on this show is who can be saved you know because there is a question and i mean this can even get into sort of a religious aspect just the the very idea of a heaven and hell it's like okay but what exactly defines who goes to heaven and who goes to hell you know and so, Canute has basically said, like, well, the Vikings would go to hell. They would not be welcome in God's paradise. So I will make them a paradise. But that comes at the cost of innocent people, you know? Now, maybe the idea is, well, he will create paradise on Earth for the demons, basically. He will create a paradise for the demons... And because of that, it will kill off all the innocent people, and thus they will be put into heaven. You know? But, that also that also goes on a very black and white view of humanity. Just good and bad. You know? And I mean, it's, it's such an interesting thing. Even Thorfinn admits, you know, he never thought of saving the Vikings. You know? But then again, is he actually saving them? Is he actually making them better, you know? Is he making them worthy of a paradise on Earth? Or is he saying you're good enough? But then again, that brings up a question. What, who is worthy of a paradise, you know, whether in heaven or on Earth? What is paradise then? What is paradise to the Vikings, you know? Because I'm pretty sure all those, all those dudes around him, they don't, actually know you know what he's thinking what he's thinking is a utopia where there is no strife and there is no war but the average viking soldier is not going to want that they want that war you know and he's already he's already meeting resistance on that because he's you know trying to do this thing where it's like okay no more pillaging no more looting none of that but his own Vikings are pushing back against that. Because, and you know what? Here's the thing of, you know, the question of like, well, you know, should we save the Vikings? Do the Vikings want to be saved? Now, this also goes to an individual level, you know? Because there are, there are a lot of Vikings that, you know, like they would look at the hell, you know, the purgatory that Thorfinn saw... And they would say, that's great, you know? They would be down there laughing with the rest of them, you know? They would be down there fighting forever, laughing forever, and that would be that, you know? But there are those 
who would not want that? Thorfinn is one. Askeladd is another, but he's down there by choice, honestly. But even like, you know, uh, was it Atli and uh, Torgrim from last season? Two, the, those two boys? Like, they were basically saved from that hell, you know? So that's another question is, you know, should we save the Vikings? Well, do the Vikings want to be saved? You know? You're putting in so much effort for a group of people that may not even want what you are offering. You know? And again, yeah, it's like, it's such a hypocritical thing to do, you know? We are going to create paradise on Earth. How? By building it on bones. You know? Like, the foundation of our paradise will be innocent lives. Like, there's nothing... There's nothing paradise about that. You know? Now, a fun thing in this episode. So, uh, a little while back. This is like a month or two back, I would say. Um, my dad and I, we were watching classic Doctor Who. Or, or maybe it was modern Doctor Who, I don't remember. But, uh, I, either way, I guess it's probably modern Doctor Who. Um, which we react to here on the channel. And, uh, we were talking about something Viking related and, uh, my dad actually brought up King Canute, you know, he's never seen Vinland Saga. I, I would love to show him Vinland Saga, but he is not a fan of animation in the slightest. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but, um, but he brought up the historical King Canute and he said, you know, like, oh, well, Canute, you know. He, he, he was kind of crazy. You know, he once said that he could stop the waves from from moving. So when that happened in this episode, I got like, whoa. Like, because I, I had never heard that before. But the fact that I had heard that there. Because when I heard that, originally I was like, that's weird. That seems really weird. Because that doesn't seem like... That doesn't seem like the character of Canute that I have seen on this show. You know? But I like here, he does that just as a show of, see, I can't, you know? He says that he will stop the waves, not because he can, but because he can't, you know? Because if he did that, that would be defying God's world, basically, you know? But he does it because he is a rebel. He is the king of rebellion. He is rebelling against God, basically. If anything, yeah... He is, we've said it, he is the king of the demons, you know? Not because the king of the demons kills the demons, but because the king of the demons is himself a demon. He is looking out for his own kind. He has been taken in and fully absorbed into Viking culture, and which is incredible considering where we started with him. But he has taken it in so much that, yes... He is their king. They see him as the chief of chiefs, you know? He is the ultimate Viking. The leader of the most powerful nation in Northern Europe, you know? And, oh boy. And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And especially, too. So, backtracking earlier... Backtracking a bit earlier, with uh, Thorfinn taking the beatings, you know, he took it. Not only did he take it, he remained composed, basically. Like, he was able to talk to Canute just fine. You know, his face is bruised up, but otherwise, you know. But, you know, when Snake comes over and says, no, you don't have to do this, Almar is going to go and surrender to the king... And you would think that would be like, okay, well, then that's done. But it's not, because that's not going to get the proper outcome for Thorfinn, you know? And I like how he says, you know, like, you didn't, like, this wasn't done right from the beginning, you know? Immediately what happened was Canute raised a sword and Catil raised a sword and lives were lost. There wasn't a proper conversation, talking using the first method you know everything went to violence the last resort immediately and that's not right you know so i like how he says that and it's like it doesn't because that's the thing is like you know in this entire situation 
why didn't Canute just go in and say, hey, I have a deal for you. I have a deal for you. We need more stuff. You know, we need more stuff. You know, you do pay a, a hefty tribute. That's true. But we pretty much need everything. Like, why didn't he make Canute like almost like a government subsidiary or something? Whatever the terms, whatever the official terms are, just make him like a government employee, basically, you know, like this is now the official government farm, you know, maybe Catil even goes and buys up some more farms, you know, with the with the backing of the king, Catil and maybe some other neighbors like we get, you know, 10 farms, 10 farms together, all under the all under the control of the crown you know f for with you know the crown can then use that on the army as well as probably distributing that to citizens as well you know like canute could have done that just go in diplomatically get many farms and then you don't even have to lose workers you know because who's going to come in and work this land you know the land doesn't just work itself you know you need people to do that. Are you just going to get more slaves? You already had people there. You already had people there. Like Thorfinn and Einar, two men. Two men in four years cleared out almost an entire forest and made it fertile soil to be farmland. It was incredible. It's absolutely incredible. It's like, why? But we know why. We know we have the answer. Why did Canute do this? Why did he immediately resort to violence for this for this goal? Because he's a Viking. You know? Because he is a Viking. He is the king of the Vikings. And that is what a Viking does. And if anything, he he seems to have lost his way. You know? Like he keeps saying all this thing all these things about a utopia, but this isn't a utopia. This isn't a paradise. It's just hell on earth. You know? You're just conquering people for no reason. You know, which if anything, yeah. It's a hell of a lot like your dad. Like your father who was going to invade and conquer Wales. Just on the hint that Asklid might be Welsh. You know? And he was going to go to Ireland because his father, the late king, had been wronged. Like 50 years ago. Probably all the people that were involved in that are dead. But he was still going to go take it out on Ireland anyway. I mean... At the end of the day, I guess he's told us what he is. Canute has told us what he is. He is a Viking. And we are the worse for it. But, the good news is Thorfinn. <clears throat> the good news is Thorfinn. Because Thorfinn is, is, he has grown into such an incredible man. He took it. He took it. He took 100 punches to do things the right way. I love... This is honestly, this is the first time, really, this is the first time this season we've genuinely seen that Thorfinn rage. You know, well, like We saw just a little glimpse of it when he punched the one guy uh, earlier. Uh, one of the retainers that destroyed their crops. But this honestly feels like the first time all season we've seen his rage. And what an amazing time to see it. You know? To see his rage when he says, Come on, is that all you've got? I can, you know, 68. 68 more punches, let's go. You know, it's that, that the fact that that rage was all in, hey, we had a deal, and I'm going to go talk to the king and end this with words, you know? Like, that was, that's incredible. And then, 
Finally. Finally. Praise be. 46 episodes. 46 episodes. Before he finally figured it out. And he finally said... I have no enemies. 46 episodes. 46 episodes with his mind desperately trying to tell him this in season 1. He finally got it and he could and he finally said, "I have no enemies." And now, he has saved himself from the warrior's hell. And and his father would be so proud of him. But now, we gotta wait another week. See what's gonna happen. See what's gonna happen with the deranged king. Ugh. Man, you know, I kind of want to... I actually do want to get the Vinland Sagas, the book. Not the manga of this. I mean the actual Vinland Sagas, and I kind of want to read them. You know what's hilarious? I don't think I can. Because what if there are spoilers for this anime? Has that ever happened before? Has that ever happened before? Where you could go read a historical document from thousands of years ago and be like, oh crap, this just spoiled the next an- episode of the anime. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of happened before, even on this show. Like, if you remember, like, the episode before I before King Swain died, I was looking up King Swain, you know, just to see, you know, just to see a few things. And I noticed his date of death, and I thought, wait, isn't that... Like, this day in Vinland Saga? And I was like, eh, there's probably nothing, probably nothing. And then, sure enough, the next episode he died. I was like, well, crap! Did I spoil myself by by going to Wikipedia? Apparently. I mean, the fact that it's like, I can't believe they actually did the moment where Canute tries to halt the waves. Because I didn't know about that. I didn't know anything about Canute, the historical figure. So... Like, just hearing that offhand from my dad, who, you know, knows more about history. Though I do have a bachelor's degree in history, I'm just shit at it. Um, But he, you know, him referencing the actual King Canute, and then seeing that, I'm like, Oh my god, he did it! He did the thing! That was amazing! You know? It is, oh, it's, it's one of those things I wish, I wish I could get him to watch this show. Ugh, but he's just he's he, he's not a fan of animation. He doesn't mind an animated movie every now and again, but I've shown him multiple animated shows and he does not get into them. Oh, but this is so good. I mean, uh, you know, this is going to this is this this might be tough. I know that the 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 number one anime is always, you know, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That's what we always say, you know. And it was at the top of, was it my anime list? I think it's it has now been officially dethroned for the past year by Free Ren. I need to watch more Free Ren before I can judge whether or not it's above Full Metal Alchemist. But this is. This. I, I, I think I'm going to have to. And, and we're not even done. We're not even done. We still got like, what, two seasons left that they need to make? We're not even done with this story, but I'm just sitting here like this may be the greatest anime of all time. Maybe one of the greatest shows of all time. You know what's nice? I like that it can just tell a story. Because like ju- I just like got in my mind, it's like, well, you know, a lot of people said Game of Thrones was one of the greatest shows of all time. Look how that turned out. And it's like, but then I just thought, it's like, you know what's nice? That there's none of that whole, like, well, we gotta subvert your expectations and do all this sensational stuff. I was like, no, it's just telling a damn good story. You know? Which is also, that's also Full Metal Alchemist. That's also kind of Free Run, even though I'm not that far in Free Run. That's honestly the same thing in Free Run. It's like, I'm really just enjoying these stories. It's like, hey, 
we're going to come in, we're going to tell you a story, it has a point, and we're going to move on. You know? Like, to me, that's so much better than something like you know, Game of Thrones or something where it's like, well, we've got to subvert your expectations. we got to play with you and give you the unexpected, which eventually pretty much just caused its downfall, at least from the show. Because, well, yeah, George R. R. Martin can do that. It's his story. Sure, he can do that. They couldn't. They could not write original stuff and subvert your expectations, you know? But it's just like, I just like, this is just a story, you know? This is just a story. And it's, it's one of the greatest of all time. We got two episodes left. I'm gonna fucking miss this show, man. But that is basically it. With all of that being said, I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video. There's a bunch of links on screen if you want to go click around any of those. There's a playlist with all of my Vinland Saga reactions, as well as another video you can go click on if you want. There's also a subscribe button and a Patreon button on screen, as well as other links in the description if you want to go check out any of those. See you guys later.